Grinder School, what is up? This is Pocket Air. I am here today with Damon for episode 3 of the Range vs. Range series. Damon, how are things going for you? Oh man, I fucking love poker at the moment. It's, uh, yeah, it's great. It's really good. Oh, hi by the way. <laughs> yeah, Damon's on a high right now. He really is. He's, uh, I think he's really enjoying things. He's learning a lot and... I th how has so far, Damon? I'm just curious. How has this series kind of uh, both directly and indirectly affected your 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 poker game and your studies? And uh, yeah, uh, quite quite a lot, quite a lot. I mean, I've I've been doing well. I should say, like doing this with you, this kind of joint study session is 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 really motivating me to do even more work by myself, away from the tables and. Uh, I started doing some range versus range with with one of the grinding school members, a guy called a, a, guy, a guy called David, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just really, really good. And uh, in, you know, the more you do something, the more it's in your mind, and yeah, it's awesome. I'm loving it at the moment. Yeah, that's awesome. So Damon had absolutely no prep for today's episode, and I think he's gonna. I think everybody's gonna get a lot of, out of this one. Pretty cool stuff. And I think it's something that uh, at least 90% of the people I talk to don't really grasp. Like, they, a lot of people know what a polarized range is. That's great, but they don't really understand how it affects them, uh, a capped versus a polarized range. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's funny you mention this, actually, because I, I, like, just before we started talking about this, I was speaking to someone on Skype, and they said... Okay, if if a if someone's opening range is uh, let's say it's thirty percent, and then they three bet, let's say ten percent, does does that mean that the three bet the three betting range is three percent? And I'm like, no, it means that they three bet ten percent of the time that they open, and and that could be polar, that could be linear, you know, it, it's really not that simple. Yes. So it's, yeah, I don't know. I think it's quite relevant to the discussion I'm having on Skype at the moment. Yeah, it is pretty relevant. I've actually got one example that I think covers just that. Um, because, and I don't want to get it. I don't want to jump too far ahead. But obviously, if someone's three betting ten percent, let's say from the blinds, he, even if he's trying to play a polarized range, he has too many uh, hands on the weaker side of that range, right? He doesn't have enough of the value hands, it's more it's too many bluff hands. So in that case a a capped or linear flatting range, uh, you know, for hero would, would play very well against his his ten percent range, right? If, yeah, if yeah, exactly. Sense. And we'll go more into that, but um, so jumping right in, slide one. So how does playing a cap versus a polarized range affect my play. Uh, how do I identify a capped range preflop, and how do I ensure I'm not exploited when playing one? And and that's kind of exactly the uh, the example I think that you brought up, Damon. And and we're gonna dig a little deeper into this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read through the rest of these, but um, just uh, just you know take some mental notes, and we'll talk more about it. Uh, the second point is how do I identify a cap range post flop, and basically the same thing as above. I want to ensure I am not or ensure that I am not exploited when playing one. And it, it goes both ways, of course. Like you want to identify it for villain, and you want to identify it for yourself, and you want to try to make it to where you're, you know, if you if you do have a capped range, uh, or if you're playing the portion of your range that's it's uh, kind of capped uh, in that sense. You want to, you basically you shouldn't be playing a purely capped range, or you're gonna be losing a lot of money um, if you're playing an opponent that can that can exploit you. And again, we're gonna look more into this. So just uh, just high level right now. And point three is when is it okay to have a capped range? And and this is exactly what Damon was talking about in the in his example that he uh, was discussing with a with a uh, grinder school member on Skype. If we identify the villain's range as being wide, 3-betting, etc., 
we can play a capped linear range with far more confidence. Villain has too many bluffs versus value hands in his range. And obviously, when is that dangerous? Uh, or when is it dangerous to be playing a capped range, on the other hand? And the reverse obviously would be true for that when our when you know villain is three betting a three percent range, then we really don't want to be flatting a a a linear range like you know king jack, queen jack, ace jack, maybe not even probably not even ace queen. Um, you know, against a range that tight because we're we're just gonna get butchered on on most flops and when we connect we're gonna set ourselves up to lose a lot of money. Uh in the, in that case if um well we'll talk about that in the in our hand examples but uh take a note there too Damon and uh kinda ask me later you know if if we are up against the three percent three better what ranges would be better for us to be flatting in position? Yeah, sure. Okay. So we're going to jump off to a couple examples. We're going to start with preflop. I am going to use my database that, uh, that I'm currently using for the Building a Bankroll series. And we're going to jump right into this first one because I think this oops really illustrates the point let me get this thought I had everything else set up but I forgot the uh, actual hand reviewer well I guess that's you guys don't have to see the very bottom of that I think that's in there yeah okay so let's go ahead and start through here and so Damon I think you know me enough that I'm not just gonna be betting a 100% bluffing range. <laughs> um, so we can assume here, or you tell me, but I think you would assume that my range is going to be pretty polarized. Uh, I mean, just, just so I'm clear, the, the under the gun that's, op that's opening, is his, is his, uh, what, what's his pre-slot raise, you know, what, what's his PFR yeah, on that. Yeah, so good questions. Uh, so he's opening 16%. Um, and I probably didn't look too much into his undergun. So obviously he's not like playing position very well. Uh, but this is kind of the number that I was probably looking at, at during this hand was how often he folds to a 3 bet, which kind of puts my queens heavily in the values, you know, the value end of that. Sorry, so which ones is uh, is is sort of three right down there? This, that number there. Yep, thirty-three percent. Okay, so if if you've got someone that's opening fairly wide that doesn't fall to many bluffs, then then your three better range is definitely biased towards value. I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it it, uh, it wouldn't make sense to to have too many bluffs in that in that range. Um, uh, yeah, almost I'd say, ever here. I'd say, I'd say because he does open quite wide for an early position and he doesn't fold very often, then you've probably expanded your value range a little bit as well. Abs so absolutely. And and obviously Damon is looking into uh, the dynamics of this hand. Um, so when I set this up, I wasn't even really thinking too much about that. I was thinking more about... Uh, the you know kind of the capped versus polarized range but you are extremely right Damon I would in this case I would be uh, opening up my value hands a lot ace, maybe even ace jack suited ace queen stuff like that uh, possibly even king queen against this guy but um, yeah very very uh, yeah, good observation thank you very much can you can you tell I read that in my book this week? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So so this guy flats my three bet. Um, what like you know looking at a guy like this who's not super strong and we don't really I don't want to get too into his stats because um, it's not really what we're trying to. Uh, we're, this is just supposed to be kind of a high level. You know. Oh, okay. View on well, this. Let's, let's let's keep it then. I, I guess 
I guess the point is his flatting range is still pretty wide, pretty weak. Okay, so what do you mean? Well, it, you know, if he's open quite a, a high range, sorry, a wide range, he's not folding very often, then most of his range is still in there. So, you know, he could, he could have conceivably any broadways, uh, some better suited connectors. You know, you know the, the things that look better than they are, especially when it's a out, out of position three bet flat, you know, I, I can see him having some of those quite easily. So, what is that saying about his range? That it's, uh... I guess that it's... Here, here's another way of saying it. Do you think he has aces, kings, queens, ace-king here? Definitely not. So then... If he doesn't have okay. those hands, he has hands that aren't premium. And if he can't, right. if he can't have those hands in his range, what's what's the term we're he's, looking for? So he's, he's he's capped his own range. Exactly. So he has a he's playing a capped range, and uh, obviously, you know, there are situations to that that you can get away with playing a, a capped range. But, you know, up against a, uh, it looks like here on, on my sample size for the building, a bankroll, you know, I'm not three betting a whole lot, right? Mm -hmm. So the flop comes like this, and um, now, you, yeah, we could say that a guy like this would, you know, flat probably maybe some lower suited connectors, and he has trips here, yada, 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 but there's a lot, a lot of other stuff that um, obviously he has that, uh, if I had an overpair on this board, I'm obviously not going to be folding. And it's a dry flop, so I would be c-betting 100% of my my uh, my three bet yeah. range. I think you're way ahead. If you've not got an overpair, then you, you know you'd you'd still probably have two high broadways, which have got so many outs. Yep. I so he checks. I bet. And the rest of this play is not too important. Um, I mean, obviously against the regular, I might give him a little more credit, but I, I kind of stuck with my uh, kind of the type of hands I put him on. I figured, you know, yeah, maybe every now and then he has a five, but uh, it's not going to be very common. And then um, pocket nines. But I, I think a guy like this is going to be capped a lot more at like 10-9, jack-9, ace-9, uh, top pair, good kicker type hands. Um, mm -hmm. But And I'm going to go ahead and just run this out so that we can... Uh, what's going on? And I actually just jam over them here. And, uh, and this is, this is uh, essentially what we're, what we're talking about with with a capped range like you, you you know if we sat there in poker ranger and we you know put a guy uh, three back calling range and and uh, a guy like this and kind of click through the hands I think we end up having a you know a very a very much middle of the line cap type hand range yeah I mean that that's uh, that is a crazy hand to open under the gun and then flat a few that <laughs> I know he says uh, his range is capped, but he's he's so far away from that cap with Jack Nine off seat that it's uh, it's painful. Yeah, yeah, and you know, like obviously that's why I was saying I open up my value range here. But a capped range to him is going to be different than a twenty-two seventeen cap range. But all the same, it's still capped. Like this guy, it doesn't matter how bad this guy is, he's probably going to be four betting aces and kings. Right. Yeah. So it's pretty easy uh, once this flop comes for me to never fold. Um, so, and, and again, don't focus too much on this guy. Focus on how we can view their three bet flats, and how we can, you know, how basically how we can be exploiting people in that sense. Okay. So let's say it was this twenty two seventeen. He's yeah. He's still gonna have a cap range when he does that, but maybe it's king queen, king jack, uh, you know, ace jack, ace queen, stuff like that. 
Yeah. But okay. it depends right. too. Right, yeah. It depends too. If I get three bet by this guy here and I'm I'm in position and I have Jack Nine suited, I'm gonna flat that. I'm gonna call his three bet. Because the Jack Nine is not uh, he's not gonna be blocking my hands. It's not like I'm gonna get all in with the Jack if I on the flop. Yeah. But I, I see what I see what you're saying. I have you're, a, you're, I have a lot of equity not, on a lot of flops that can be realized later later on on later streets. Yeah, and Jack Nine suited isn't a dominated hand. Like right? yes, I guess what you're saying is you'd never call with something like King Jack off suit because you just no idea where you stand. Yes, very good. Oh, you're ahead of me, Damon. Good job. So so in this sense, this is a different story because I'm the one in position and he's flatting, but. I would actually, uh, I, uh, I would totally put Jack Nine offsuit in this guy's range. He's just got a wider. He's going to have a wider linear range than some people, but it's still a linear range. It's still a capped range, I should say. Uh, it's just his version of a capped range is going to be wider than you know this 1414s or this 2015s or mine even, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. But this, uh, what does this show you too? This shows that, you know. The I'm if I'm if I'm if I flat Jack Nine suited and a flop comes like this and this guy's betting uh, this 2015. That, that's just a fold for me. Uh, I'm not gonna sit there and try to outplay. Maybe I call the flop, but I'm not gonna sit there and call multiple barrels. Uh, the danger of playing a capped range is when you don't know how to um, see see. When you don't know how to determine where or how strong your hand is on the flop compared to villain's three betting range, that's where the danger comes in. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, oh, definitely. You know, like to kind of expand on what you're saying, if I had Jack Nine uh, and I called your three bet, but then I see that you only three bet. Two percent or or whatever on the flop. I'm I'm still not overly happy with uh, you know pair of nines, pair of fives. Yeah, sure. You'd be much more. You would be much more happier with uh, you know a a flush draw. Like say say it came. You know we had jack nine of diamonds and this was uh, you know there were two diamonds even on a pair of board. Um, that that equity is far better because we can realize nut equity essentially whereas jack nine is very capped if we're calling down with uh, with such a capped hand uh, we're going to be in a lot of trouble yeah our equity is <laughs> not going to improve very often uh, or at least we're not going to make the the nut where we know we where we can happily shove type hand very often, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Okay. Okay. And yeah, I with Jack Nine against this guy because we have the five outs, uh, you know, for ten percent. I I probably would call one continuation bet, and you know, maybe he uh, for two reasons. Maybe he is a one. Maybe he ones and duns it, or maybe we hit one of our one of our outs, right? But. Okay. Okay. So here's another one. And this is the opposite of what we saw before. Where the, uh, what Damon likes to refer to as the cool guy down here, is <laughs> in position. And we have a gentleman over here who. I think I remember, and this is, I don't play too much on the building of bankroll, uh, at the building of bankroll stakes, but uh, I, I think I remember this. Um, so he three bets, he's three betting 12.5%, which is, uh, which is obviously extremely high. And I'm guessing, if I, I know this is off the screen, so you guys can't quite see it, uh, but this is the only important part anyway. Is obviously from the blinds. He's uh, just going crazy. So obviously, I can say that even you know, even if it, 
even if he wants us to be a polarized range, his bluffs are just far too many. And this is one of those situations where uh, having a big, even if it's a capped hand, having a big Broadway type hand like King Queen, King Jack can do a lot of damage because by flatting, we're just so far ahead of his, uh, I mean, we, we're still doing really well against his three betting range. Which yeah, which am, am, I right, am I right to say in this example, Dan, that by his range now is uncapped, but by your calling, that yours is capped? Yes. O how, unless, unless you're trying to be really tricky. However, y y yeah, that's, I mean, that's what we're aiming for, right, um, is, is essentially exactly what you said. However, when... In, what what's going to be easy for you to remember? Me player one or him player one? Uh, I al I always have the hero as player one. It's just my way of doing it. Okay, so you tell me what my cap range is. Uh, well, you've you've not got aces, kings, queens, or ace, kings. I doubt you've got jack. So I'm going to put yeah. Those are the next roll for sure. Uh, I I would basically put like some of that. Some of, of this. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, you know, I, I think I'd still be surprised if you had that ace queen tooted. Because someone three betting that much, you could definitely then put that in your four bet value range for sure. And, you, so and, and you're that. right. You're right. The thing is, like, uh, how I would view that is I want that ace queen suited to. to uh, to dominate, like that would be the top of my three bet flatting range, um, and being in position, I have absolutely nothing to to worry about. I think out of position, um, I I would actually uh, probably four bet that against his okay. range. Um, I, it's just I'm trying to essentially crush his lopsided, uh, you know, what's supposed to be a polarized range. Yeah. I would yeah, I would put them three in, and I would probably add the the uh, vertical line on the suited, so the ace ten, the king ten, the queen ten, like this. Yeah, I, I'd I'd still put the ace ten in there at least. The oh, eight, oh, sorry, suited. okay. And then maybe I mean nines. Yep. Nines for sure. Uh, eights, I, I, I probably would. With tens, I'm not sure whether you'd add that to your, your value range or your flatting range. I'm gonna put and it by flatting for now, and then everything else would be obviously up above that would be value. Um, yeah. I'm and your some 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 better suited connectors. Ten nine, eight nine. Yep. Uh, eight seven for sure. You I mean you, you may as well. Yep. No, I agree. And. I think this is close. Uh, East ten. I uh, probably. You do. You do have. You do have position. Yeah. So I probably. I probably put East ten in there and kind of leave it at. Well, I'd probably be more likely to do. Yeah, I wish I could do half combos on this because I'd probably play some of these sometimes against his range. But I, the, and this serves the point, right? I mean, the, this we can see it's a very middle range. Yeah. Okay, and it's about ten percent of hands, which which probably makes sense because I'm opening what on the button. What would you think? Thirty-five, forty. 45, somewhere uh, in there. Yeah. At least, sometimes. Yep. And so player two, and this is what we're kind of talking about. So when he's opening that wide, I mean, this is essentially, his three betting range is going to be, um, well. I, I think you do have to give some more value hands. You know, I think yeah. kings, queens, jacks, probably even tens are still in there. Yeah. Yep, for sure. I mean, I'm going to say that oh. 
This is kind of symmetrical, not so much uh, polarized. But um, here, let's let's uh, let's clean this up a little. Do something like. Oh, and remember, this is from the blind, so actually that's not overdoing it at all. Because we saw it was 20-something 20, 20 from the blinds. Uh, what do you think, Damon? I don't want to steal this. Uh, I think you can you can take out some of the, the better broadways. Like, uh, when I see a 13%, uh, so 20% range, I mean, he's going to have some calling range. So I, I'd, I'm not sure that he would he would call with something like King Queen suited. That's uh, right. He would three bet with King Queen suited. Okay, very good. Yep. Uh, and I, you know, I suppose pr pretty much the opposite of what you've just flatted with all. Yes, and that's what we're uh, that's what we're trying to get at. So capped versus a polarized range, but remember his polarized range is going to have a lot more bluffs than strong hands. Yeah, and, and in my experience, I don't know if this is the same with you. When when you start talking about polar, polarized ranges as well, I mean they love to put, and I do this, all the pocket pairs in because, okay, it's a bluff. But then when it does hit, you get that extra benefit of you know, oh wow, I've got a set. Yeah, and that really depends on the players too, um, obviously. But uh, so how about some of these weak aces we take out? I would, yeah. Okay, so do what something like that, and then add a couple more of these type of hands. Yeah, and I, I think I'd be tempted to take out king jack suited, queen jack suited, uh, ace jack suited. I, I think that you know I, he has to have some sort of calling range, and I think the, these are the the best candidates for that. I mean, it's quite hard because I'm, I'm thinking about what my three betting bluff range is. So uh, a guy like this, remember though, is going to be way more lopsided too. So we do need to throw in some of these worse hands, uh, like Jack Ten. Uh, I'd say. I mean, I mean, that's the whole reason that I would even be flatting a linear range against them, right? Maybe we put. Yeah. Maybe we put enough. back Ace Nine, maybe Queen Nine. These type of hands. Um, maybe ten eight suited. Uh, what do you think of Queen Jack suited? Mm, I think I wish we could do fifty percent because I think it could go both ways a hand like that. Okay, what about nine seven and eight seven? Uh, would see? No, I, I, I honestly don't think he will. Because if he is a weaker player, then he, he's going to stick towards Broadway. So de that's definitely where the lopsidedness would be. So he is, he's got Regis Statch. Uh, he's a weaker. Oh, sorry, he, he's okay. got he's got a huge leak, and that's what we're exploiting here. But he's not like a whale or anything. Uh, oh, okay. In that case, then I definitely put nine eight suited in eight seven suited. Wait, like this? Yeah, I mean, the, in my opinion, those are better hands to three bet plus than than queen jack off, for example. But you know, it's a big range he's got. Yeah, and it's tough too because, like, actually, if I'm if I'm just doing it as a bluff. I would rather do a linear range because I have some blockers. Um, if I'm if I'm calling a three bet, then I'd rather have hands like this. Uh, obviously, well, I'd rather ha have hands like this, but you know what I mean. Like I'd <laughs> I'd rather have hands that they don't dominate and that I can have a lot of equity that I can realize. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. But um, you know, pretty wide. I think this is even. I think he was what twenty-two and twenty-five. So I think he is going to be through betting a lot of these weird type hands. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, pick a couple more. We on the weaker side. He, I think we're too strong still for this guy because it's got to be lopsided. Uh, all right. I put the How about the, the much smaller, much smaller suited connectors and things like King Nine, King Eight, King Seven suited. Maybe they are they too too strong. Mm. No, I think I think that's good actually. I I think he's gonna be you know some of the big hands that he doesn't want to flat. Um. Yeah, and maybe some of the the ace ace off suit type hands. Okay, so somewhere in here, right? Yeah. Okay. So we we kind of be looking like this, and I actually. You know, I'm going to have a very capped range. She's going to have a very polarized range. So the danger only comes in when you totally misplay this. Um, uh, I know that he's going to have a lot of weaker hands than me and, uh, on, on certain flops. And uh, I, I've just got to, you know, I, I think my, my capped heavy Broadway range is going to do really well on a lot of flops. Uh, because he is so wide, and he does have that, you know, lopsided uh, uh, value to bluff type range. Yeah. And what was that board, Damon? Uh, oh, we didn't see a board. Okay. So flop comes like this. Pretty interesting. Um, and I, yeah. I still think that, you know, uh, obviously king queen. Ace Queen, uh, a lot of this hits my range. Um, yeah. What what is? I think it, I think it hits, hits both of you pretty well, but in terms of the percentage of each of your range, it ranges it hits you harder because you've got a smaller range, which is more Broadway dominated. Yes. So something like this, and as you can see, you know my my cap range actually does really well on on this board versus his his uh, lopsided range. I, I, I it's hard to call it polarized because you know you, you kind of want to even out a polarized range, and and his is going to be pretty lopsided in in this case. He's playing way too wide. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, it does to me. Okay. So he bets, and uh, I'm obviously, if I hit any part of this board, I'm not folding here. Uh, not with the jack, not with the queen, because he double barrels all the time, and his range is going to be very wide. So I call. He bets. Yeah, again. I mean. He bets again. If he doubles, if he doubles, if he double barrels all the time, and you're in position, you, 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 you know, you should be calling this with. Uh, some strong draws as well for at least one. And then he checks, Damon. Why would he check on the river after after uh, double barreling half pot? I mean, other than this being a dead giveaway. Uh, I, I don't know what those. So I think I think whatever hand he had is starting to run out of a little bit of steam, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, so I didn't know what I didn't know what stop where that you were playing. Oh, so uh, sixty-seven is continuation bet. 99 is turn continuation bet, and zero, oh, yeah. zero is triple barrel. So he likes to bully people off, but doesn't go all the whole way. Yep, and this, this you know, huge leak, wide range, again, never folding jack or queen. And I go ahead and check, because obviously I'm not going to do anything else here where I, uh, I'm only going to get called with uh, probably better at this point. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is when th this is when it's okay to play a capped range against a guy who has far too many bluff bluffing hands in his in his three betting range. Do you want to add anything to that? I'm just thinking, like, I'm, I mean, what, what you said, I completely agree with. But I'm, I'm just wondering, what do you, like, out of position, do you edge more towards the polarized range or? So if I'm in the small blind, yeah, that's going to be a little different, right? Like I'm probably, probably just tightening my opening range if if I'm being three bet by the big blind. Yeah. Let Let's say Let's say you were the cutoff, and this guy was the button. Same Same three bet percentage. 
Uh, and he three bets you. Would, I mean, would would you be less inclined to call with a linear range because you're now out of position? So wait, uh, so where, where where was I? Sorry, so you're the cutoff and he's the button, and it's it's exactly the same. So let's take King Jack. It's a great hand. Uh, yes, then I would. You then open. I would tighten my range up. Absolutely. Right. So yeah, I had position here. But let's face it, at the lower micros, most people like their comfort zones, the blinds to three bet out of. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's definitely true. So yes, to answer your question, I would, I would not. I, I mean, it depends on the guy too. You know, if this guy, if I know the guy's twenty five percent three betting from the button, then you know, and I'm pretty confident in my post flop game, then maybe I do flat some of these hands out of position. Yeah, and I guess it, I mean it definitely expand your four betting for value range. I mean this guy's this guy's continuation betting almost all of his range, almost, you know, two thirds on the flop. So being that wide and then continuation betting that wide really doesn't, you know, your your range is just so wide that you've got a lot of weak hands in there. You don't have enough value hands. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and remember, uh, I don't, uh, polarized versus capped or slash linear range, whatever you want to call it, doesn't just apply pre-flop. It applies post-flop too, right? So when a flop comes, our range can actually totally change. Our uh, not our not the hands that we went to the flop with, but the the type of hand that we now have. If I let's say this guy is a three percent three better, and I have uh, I don't know nine ten suited here on the button, and I flat his three bet, and the board comes you know six seven uh, or let's say seven eight jack or whatever. I now have hands that are I I if he bets and I call I now have a you know essentially remember I shouldn't use ten nine because I'm not giving myself a range but you know what I mean if I have a if I have a lower suited connector lower let's just say uh, pocket pair range yeah then I now have a polarized range that I'm calling with. Yeah, you either stick around with something where you call something that just hit a set or a strong over pair, or probably not strong over pair, but yeah, yeah I thought, I thought or yeah. I I should shouldn't say that I'm calling with. I have a polarized range on the flop, and let's say that we all know he only has aces and kings. He actually has a capped range now. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a nice cap. <laughs> it's a nice cap. Uh, but there's going to be he's going to be there's going to be times where he's dominated, right? Um, but it, it's really cool to think about it that way. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if that's about good for the. I think that kind of demonstrates the uh, the capped range. Having a capped range and when and when not to play it. And wouldn't you agree, Mr. Damon? Yeah, I thought, I thought it was a very, uh, very good way of highlighting linear and, and power. Okay, so next thing. Uh, obviously, when I'm talking about down here, how, how do we, you know, ensure that we're not exploited? Well, if you're you know, if you're gonna play a capped range, it's it's dangerous. It, you can lose a lot of money, so make sure you you are playing it for a reason. Make sure that you know, you know, what your opponent's range is and how that how those hands, if we're talking pre-flop, fit into that, uh, fit into your let's just say three bet calling range. Yeah, and may maybe if I was to add something onto that, I'd say if you've got very few hands on a villain. And he has like fifteen percent three bet, but he's actually only done it 
okay, well, this is impossible, but let's say he's only had three three attempts to do it and he's three bet once. You don't actually know if he's uh if if he's like got a wide three betting range or it's just a small sample size. So I guess what I'm trying to say is with, with smaller sample sizes on villains, it's probably better to be more careful with the catch range because you you don't know if you're facing a linear range or a polar polarized range. Yeah, exactly. You're you're you don't have a lot of info. Um for sure. No, I totally agree. That's a good point. Wow, look at me. I'm becoming a pro. Oh, I thought you already were a pro. Yeah, I don't like to brag though. I get you gotta work on your math though. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I I knew the point you were trying to make. <laughs> um Yeah. You you need to work on your country. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'm only joking. So I'm only joking. I love Canada. <laughs> you're funny. Here we go. Um, so slide two, and this this slide's gonna kind of go over post flop. And I have one hand example for this, and I'm uh, you know I'm gonna question Damon and kind of make him talk through uh, what his ranges would be in in these situations. So here we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean straight away I'd be the happiest person in the world because they always say it's best to have a massive fish to your right and I'm doing really good on that here <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I've definitely got the Jesus seat on the fish <laughs> <laughs> why does this keep switching oh because it's trying to play through it anyway so that's fine uh you know, I I'm obviously a uh, I open from the cutoff and the button calls, and then this is interesting. I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, you know what I did? I copied this. Uh, obviously, you can see this is a copy right here. So this uh, I don't think this is representing what this is. But anyway, we'll get we'll get the point. Um, so uh, down here, this wasn't even me, or, and this isn't even Damon. This is just a hand that I grabbed and uh, threw his picture on it. So anyway, uh, uh, I go ahead. So pre -flop, you opened and I called. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, yeah, because it's 85 cents. Okay, and then on, on the flop, you make a pot size bet, and then I just think, what a massive fish! I'm going to raise him, and 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 that's where we're at. Well, but let's more talk about ranges and not who, because actually I think the guy that I put myself <laughs> over is uh, kind of a fishy player, and I think I actually think I'm you. But anyway. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so um. So I go ahead and yeah, it's a bad hand. So I put your picture on it. Uh, so the this guy bets out eighty five cents, and we raise it pretty big. Um, what? Let, let, let's just talk about like you personally, and I, this is why I put your your picture on this. What would you raise on this board? Uh. I mean, it's quite hard to say because I'd want to know a bit more about you. But what okay, I'd say is, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm except for my bet size, I'm a 2016. Uh, or how about a? Let's let's do like I'm a 2822. 2822. Okay, so that sort of player. I mean. This is, this is a good question, actually, because that, that flop is so dry. If... On that flop, I think I'd, I'd be playing... I'd be raising polarized. So I'd, I'd either have a middling hand that I want to get you off, or I'd be trying to get value from your ASEX or whatever you have with, with, with a set of fives or six or something like that. Okay. I made even aces itself. Okay. 
So when you say a polarized range, tell me a little more. Uh, okay, in, in this case, I mean, if you're a, a, a 28, 22 player making a pot-sized bet after opening the cutoff, I, I would assume that you'd have at least a piece of it from being a pot-sized bet. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean you've got ace. You know, you could have any pocket pair in the middle. You, I mean, you could have a set, which I don't want to run in, et cetera, et cetera. So by polarized, the weaker hands that I'd consider raising with would be something like, a, I don't know, like, yeah, a, a pair of sevens or maybe something like like seven, eight suited that I called with just because I've got so many outs uh, as well as the full equity. So if you, so when I think polarized on this, I would think more like, you know, like, yeah, seven eight, seven eight suited, or seven eight even off suit that maybe I flatted, or um, stuff, yeah. stuff that has some sort of equity, and then maybe maybe hands that uh, I I probably wouldn't. I pro if I had a small pocket pair here, I probably wouldn't do anything. Um, yeah, I probably want some sort of equity. So I I would still consider an ace hand. Um, I, I don't think it's over repping on this board. I would a big ace. I mean, um, I'd also obviously the f you know the sets and stuff like that. But I'd want some kind of equity in the polarized portion of the range. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, personally, if I had aces or ace king, I think I. I would flat this because I straight away I've taken away one of your possible holdings, and I don't want you to fold with a hand that strong. But that's that's my preference. So if you, then what are you calling with? Uh, I think I'm calling with. Oh yeah, I mean my calling range would be very. I don't know if capped is the right word. It, it, yes, it'd be a, you a are catching on. Look at you. So it'd be linear, linear strong. You know, I, I would call you all day with sets, ace king. But that's maybe that's even that's not yeah. But I was thinking you were. Uh, wait, where are you going with capped? You confused me after that second part. Oh, well, you you just give me a lot of praise, so I'll, I'll just go back now. <laughs> <laughs> so what's a cap? Uh, what's a capped range on this board? And let's talk made hands. Okay. I don't know. I think I might be getting a bit confused with the, the terminology now. So I would so tell me tell me what hands you're calling with. Uh like so you said aces, uh that's only that's three combos, but it's nice to have that in there. Um yeah. and you said you're raising with what? Uh sets, um and then uh, maybe no. maybe some draws. No. Yeah, some draws and. So you're not raising with sets. I really. I, good question. I mean, it, I think it that would really depend on what I thought of you. Because if I if I think you're going to fold every time, you you'll fold your ace x. Or you know, or whatever you could have, then then I wouldn't. But if I think you'll you know you'll stick around, then yeah, of course I would. Okay. Uh, but let's let's. So you you picture me as semi competent. <laughs> I won't go that far, Dan. <laughs> uh, semi competent. Okay. Well, and if you're semi competent, then I then I, I wouldn't raise my super strong hands against you. Okay. Then what would you raise? Uh, my basically my I won't say bluffs but I would say some bluffs with a lot of outs so 7-8 if I had 3-4 maybe even there uh, my and that might actually be it so and this is kind of where I wanted this to go so if you're raising draws and bluffs then 
and and I've played enough hands against you, let's just say, to know that, then what would my best response be every time you raise? Just to re-raise. Exactly. So how what does that do to your raising range? Uh in a, it, in a sense, even though you have some draws in there, in a sense, it's pretty capped, right? Yeah, my my my, my raising range is capped at <laughs> bad hands, and now, <laughs> or non-made hands, I should say. And now your calling range is super strong. Yeah. Um, and then, what? where do you put, like, say you had pocket sevens, pocket eights, uh, pocket nines, pocket tens, where do you put those? Uh, I'd say they're in my they're in my calling range, my my one street calling range. Okay, yeah, that's probably where I'd put them too. But do you see where I'm going with this? Uh, you know, as we're as you're moving up in stakes and as you're playing more competent players, um, you can cap you can unknowingly cap your range. So your raising range just got really weak. Your calling range is really strong. Uh, your raising range isn't polarized in any sense because you would have to and I know you're saying it's opponent dependent but hear me out because I kind of gave you just a rough you know who I am type and and you kind of lean yeah. toward that way so for the sake of discussion uh, you are you now have a very capped raising range post flop and if it was the situation where you know say I'm a say I'm a different type of player and it's a different board and we have a lot of uh, second and third pair and let's say you know there's an, an over card or two on the board and and you open pocket nines and I flatted behind you and how do, how do you play that out like let's just say uh, you probably continue bet, continuation bet once with nines what do you think uh, yeah, out of position definitely. It'd be a, a one and done almost. Okay, so so let's say you have a so obviously by I'm trying to think of a, a better makeup for the board. Let's say you have second pair and you've got a villain f with a wide range, but you don't want to bloat the pot. Uh, does that turn into a two street call? Uh, if if the villain's got a wide range and he's always betting two streets, then then yeah. Okay, and let's say that this villain, you know, this villain um, will like with with all your strongest hands, you'll always three bet him, and you know that he'll stack off with top pair, top kicker. So you're essentially exploiting him. Um, in in this case, but when you're calling down, and it might not matter against this guy because it's not going to matter against the weakest of players, right? But you're you're essentially capping your calling range, right? You're capping it to those sevens, eights, nines, you know, whatever second pair, third pair type hands. Yeah, you have no, yeah, you, that's not sad to say. and that's okay when there's a reason to exploit, like here. Not a real reason to exploit, and I was kind of setting you up for a trick question, just for you know the sake of of this video. But I hope that kind of sheds some light on, yeah. especially as you're moving up in stakes and you're playing players that actually watch for those type types of things. No, that's really yeah, it's quite insightful. I think this the flop texture has, has lent a lot to this discussion. For sure, and and another thing is like, and, and that's when you have to start. And I don't want to use balancing, but that's when you have to start really, you know, polarizing your ranges. Because if you never have sets in your raising raising range and you only have draws, then a jam is going to be profitable for me almost all the time. Yeah. Because you can't. If this if this if this board was five of clubs and then the queen and jack of hearts, and I'm. I think it's in my head. It's a completely different scenario because I could be I could be raising for value or as a bluff. Yes. 
yes, but I th I thought this board was was pretty good to like distinguish between the nuts and oh, yeah. and, and draws and I mean it it doesn't have a lot of draws, but it, it, still on this board if the if those are the type of hands that you're raising with mm. against you know against in, instead of your monsters, then they kind of capture range if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure, but, definitely does. But pretty cool stuff, and it, it's really cool when, and, and I, I know that it's, you know, there's a lot of people still working on this stuff and, and not thinking of it in that light, but when you start understanding it, it's really, really cool how, you, so it, it's basically making them indifferent, right? I mean, that's the whole point. Uh, when, you're, when you're playing a good player, you're playing an unknown player, and you're not exploiting, uh, you know, you're, you you don't see any exploits yet. You you want to be indifferent against uh, against their essentially against their ranges. Yeah, uh, makes a lot of sense. Cool, man. Well, uh, we've been going about an hour now, and uh, I think that I think that's a I think I think there was a lot to cover in that video, and I want to see the grinder school members definitely leaving feedback on the forums and kind of talking through this and and. Uh, you know, just yeah, I hope so. I quite I quite like the private messages that I get on on the forums. It's it's uh, quite reassuring. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, Damon, it's been a pleasure. Grinder School, thanks oh. for watching. Yep, thanks, Grinder School. Thank you, Pocket Hair. Uh -huh. <laughs> Damon's got this thing going. He's gonna have everybody calling me Pocket Hair. <laughs> Pocket term. <laughs> right, you're a funny guy. I don't know. Look at this down here. Look at that portrait. <laughs> Hiding your hair. That's a oops, 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 oops. Sorry, guys. All right, cool, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up and uh, yeah, talk to you guys soon.